Welcome to WMNF 88.5 FM and WMNF.org. This is the Tuesday Cafe with Sean Canan. The deadline to sign up for health insurance through Obamacare, the Affordable Care, the, the Affordable Care Act marketplace is Saturday. Our guest this hour will tell you how to compare plans and how to enroll. We'll take your questions about the Affordable Care Act. Joining us by Zoom for the hour is Katie Roders Turner, the Executive Director of Family Healthcare Foundation. Welcome to WMNF, Katie. Thank you so much for having me, Sean. This is great. What an awesome opportunity. I'm really glad you can come on because I think this is a great service for our listeners and so many people are interested in this topic and uh, really can get a lot of help through, through the advice that you're going to give us this hour. So I hope people tune in and tell your friends if you want to know anything about signing up for uh, the Affordable Care Act Marketplace, tune into 88.5 FM right now. We'll also be, of course, sharing this later on our website. We're recording video of the Zoom conference and so this will be up on WMNF.org later on. Well, tell us first, Katie, about your group, Family Healthcare Foundation, and what the role is that you have when it comes to helping people sign up for Obamacare. Thank you so much, of course. So the Family Healthcare Foundation is a nonprofit. We've been in Tampa Bay for almost 25 years, and our vision is that every person in Tampa Bay has equitable access to affordable and quality healthcare coverage to ensure a healthy and vibrant community. So we're generously funded by the Children's Board of Hillsborough County, University of South Florida's College of Public Health, Hillsborough County, and Florida Healthy Kids Corporation to provide free, unbiased, confidential, one-on-one -on -one application assistance to help people find the most affordable, high-quality healthcare coverage, and then also understand how to use that. And we have Navigator Partners in Tampa Bay, uh, of course, with USF, College of Public Health, uh, Baycare Health System, Tampa General Hospital, Premier Community Healthcare, and Evera Health in Pinellas County. So there's navigators at each of those locations helping people find affordable healthcare. Which counties do does your group serve? Thank you. So um, under a statewide coalition called Covering Florida, which is convened by USF, we cover the Tampa Bay area. So we cover Hillsborough, Pasco, Pinellas, and Polk. But what's so great is if we find someone who's calling us from um, Palm Beach County or from Broward, we can refer to our regional partners in that area. So we're able to connect with any navigator entity statewide to make sure that everyone in Florida has coverage. And the information that you're giving people is about private health insurance, but it's through, this, through the marketplace. But what's your affiliation with the insurance companies? Do you get a commission or anything like that? That's a great question. So we're navigators. So we are federally funded and certified as navigators to ensure that we're looking at the health insurance marketplace, the federal government's platform to shop for coverage and compare plans. Um, but we do not receive any commission. We have no bias. We're completely objective. We're truly just helping people compare the options that are available to them and ensuring that they understand their choices. Um, and that's the great part about working with a navigator knowing that we are unbiased and that we are going to show everyone all of the insurance carriers that are available to them. I wanna remind people that we're speaking with Katie Roders Turner, Executive Director of Family Healthcare Foundation and the sign up deadline for the Obamacare uh, Marketplace Insurance Plans is this Saturday, open enrollment. And so who, what kind of people are eligible to sign up on for Obamacare? That's a great question. So. Pretty much most people are eligible. As long as you are lawfully residing in um, the United States, um, you're definitely eligible to go in and look for, look for plans. Um, and a large number of people are eligible for financial assistance. In fact, more people this year are eligible than ever before. Um, previously, there was a cap to financial assistance to people who were um, making maximum 400% of the federal poverty level. So for example, a household size of one who was earning more than 50,000 wouldn't be eligible for advanced premium tax credits to reduce the premium price. But that has changed. And now even people who are over that threshold are still eligible for financial assistance. So if anyone has ever come into the marketplace, looked at it, decided it was too expensive for them, we are encouraging everybody to go back and take a look again, because those plan prices really may have changed. Something else that's important to know about our navigators at the Family Healthcare Foundation and with our community partners is that if someone determines that the marketplace is not a good fit for them, 
we'll look at any other option that might be available. So for example, in Hillsborough County, there's the Hillsborough County Healthcare Plan, which may be a really good fit for some people. Also Florida Kid Care, which is the state's health insurance for kids. They have some amazing programming as well that we'd be happy to talk to with anybody about. It's not just Hillsborough, there are other counties that have plans that could help people out if, if the Obamacare Affordable Care Act marketplace isn't the right fit. Absolutely, you're 100% correct. So Pinellas County has an excellent comparable program as well as Polk County as well. I'll say in Tampa Bay, we're very fortunate to have some really great programming to help support people. Our guest is Katie Roders turner Executive Director of Family Healthcare Foundation. We're talking about this Saturday's deadline to sign up for health insurance through the Affordable Care Act Marketplace. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe with Sean Canan on WMNF Tampa. If you have any questions about getting ACA coverage, give us a call at 813-239-9663. You can also email your questions to dj at wmnf.org. If you'd like to text, it's 813-433-0885. So Katie, tell us uh, this year, how many different ACA plans are there and how does that compare to previous years? Oh, so many more. Wow. So this year we actually have uh, more than uh, 160 plans available from seven different carriers. And so that's about 60 more plans than we had previously and two more carriers, which is excellent because it provides more options for people. Um, plans uh, that they hadn't seen previously are not now available, more insurance carriers, which is great, especially for larger provider networks. Um, you know, with those options, of course, we always understand that people may feel a little overwhelmed when looking at all of the different options available. Again, that is really why it's helpful to work with a navigator. There's a really great resource on the healthcare.gov website called a window shopping pool. And that's awesome because then you can go in, you can plug in some basic information and still be able to compare the prices of plans side by side. Um, so you can compare different carriers side by side. Um, perhaps maybe you're looking for either a lower deductible or a higher deductible, depending on your budget. Um, so there really is quite a few options out there. It's interesting that you mentioned that there's two more insurance carriers this year, because in the past we heard criticism from people or, you know, some people said that because um, the insurance companies had rules to follow that, that they'd be dropping out, that, that, that they were worried that insurance companies that used to cover Obamacare would drop out and just go straight uh, free market programs. But it seems like more and more insurance companies now are joining the ACA. Yeah, we've seen that in years. You know, um, in the very beginning, there were quite a few carriers on the marketplace. And then, you know, as the years passed, we did see some insurance carriers drop out. And that was challenging. However, I would say in the last two to three years, we've had at least four that I can recall in recent years join the marketplace, um, which is really exciting. Um, some of them are from the larger names that people are very familiar with, like uh, Florida Blue, United Healthcare is back in Tampa Bay, and then others are very specific to the individual health insurance marketplace. Um, so we're always excited about promoting those and looking at those as well too. Um, so again, there are quite a few options and uh, we really feel like the provider networks are really adequate. Um, and that's a great part of um, the work that we do as well. Not only do we help do the plan selection with people and comparing plans side by side, we'll help people identify if their providers are in network, what are gonna be some of the costs when you go to utilize your coverage? Do you need to find a new doctor? Ensuring specialists are in network, things like that. Some people have contacted us in this past. They've called in, they said, well, we tried to get Obamacare. We tried to get this um, ACA medical coverage, but it was too expensive. So how expensive are the plans and compare that with other health insurance? Well, that's a great point. So, you know, the plan prices are really gonna be very specific to a couple of different variables. One, um, what is someone's income for their household? Their taxable, adjusted, uh, modified adjusted gross income. Uh, what will that be? Will that allow for financial assistance to help reduce the price of the premiums or even reduce the price of out-of-pocket expenses? Another factor that may be um, impacting cost is the age of someone and then also if there is tobacco use in the household. Those would be the only demographic variables that may increase premium price. Um, so depending on income, that would really make a big Big, big change to the premium prices being seen by somebody in uh, looking at coverage prices. But a typical family, maybe a, a family of four that makes, I don't know, $60,000 or $70,000, um, what, what would the cost be? 
you know what? So that's a great question. So actually, I'll just refer to something I did yesterday with somebody. It was a household size of three, $50,000 for the household. So I'll use that one because it's fresh in my mind. Um, we were looking at the different plans. So they actually were eligible for tax credits that there was a premium that would be free for them, a $0 plan. It was a higher deductible plan. However, all those plans, uh, all the plans will cover preventative services for free. Um, and that was something that they were considering. Um, and then they also were eligible for some of the out-of-pocket expense reduction through cost-sharing reductions. Um, and those middle-level plans were looking at about uh, anywhere from 100 to 200, depending on the carriers that they were looking at. Um, so hopefully that's a good example to share. I guess this is Katie Roters Turner, Executive Director of Family Healthcare Foundation. We're talking about this Saturday's deadline to sign up for health insurance through the Affordable Care Act Marketplace. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe with Sean Canan on 88.5 FM WMNF Tampa. It's 1017 in the morning. If you have any questions about getting ACA coverage, call us at 813. 813- 239-9663. You can email dj at wmnf.org or text 813-433-0885. We have someone in 813 area code who texted, previously people whose employer offered health care coverage were often not eligible for subsidized coverage on the marketplace. Is that still the case? If not, what is the new criteria for being eligible to buy coverage? So unfortunately, that is still the case. There's been some amazing legislation changes in the last year. Um, and we're hoping for additional ones in the future, but unfortunately there is still something what that's called the family glitch. So if someone's employer does offer health insurance to them, the chances are that they will not be eligible for financial assistance on the marketplace and that the employer coverage will likely be the most affordable option for them. What we have seen some people do, especially for those who have children, they may look at Florida Kid Care as an option, um, to kind of match up with the employer coverage for themselves or their spouse. Sometimes people will still look at the marketplace plans full, for full price plans um, without financial assistance, and that may be a good fit too. Um, so it's definitely worth exploring for sure um, and seeing if any of the other programs like Florida Kid Care could help um, reduce the premium price for the family. What about people who make so little income that they would be covered under Medicaid in some other states? Um, how, what, what kind of advice would you give them and why is Florida different? Thank you so much for asking. So Florida is unfortunately still one of those states that has not yet expanded Medicaid. So we are um, certainly very different in that way, um, which is why it is so important to ensure that we're promoting our um, county-based programs like Hillsborough County Healthcare Plan, which may um, really cover that gap for people who fall into what we call the Medicaid gap area, where we don't have the expanded Medicaid there is not financial assistance on the marketplace, unfortunately. Um, but we are very lucky in, in Tampa Bay to have some really amazing programming that still provides uh, high quality healthcare services for free. Where is that income line? Is it about 100% of the poverty level? Um, actually, it was just recently increased to 175. The Hillsborough County Board of County Commissioners um, just recently passed a policy that um, increased it quite a bit. Um, and then in addition to that, they did add some dental services as well, which is really exciting. So also on the other end of the spectrum, it might be expensive for people who are not getting the tax credits uh, that used to be 400% and above of poverty. They aren't expensive plans, but because they're sliding scales costs, um, the, it might be more expensive. It might be, it might be let me put this a different way. Sorry about sure. that. So it, when you get to the high income levels, you might even find that going and just buying private insurance without a supplement with not leaving aside the Affordable Care Act might be the option. It's certainly possible. Um, you know, I was working with a family household size of four the other day and uh, their income was at 130,000. They were still eligible for um, some financial assistance. Um, so they elected to go into the marketplace as opposed to going off um, and looking at um, full price plans directly with the carriers. Um, the thing that I really do love about the health insurance marketplace is that you can see all of the insurance companies that are selling individual policies for people and families in one spot. Um, if you do elect to go off marketplace, that's totally fine. You just may only see that carrier's uh, plan selection. And so you're not necessarily getting the full comprehensive view of what might be available to you. 
I want to remind people that our guest is Katie Roeders Turner, Executive Director of Family Health Care Foundation. They're the navigators for the Affordable Care, Act, Affordable Care Act marketplace. And we're talking about this Saturday's deadline to sign up for Obamacare health insurance through the ACA. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe with Sean Canan. And if you do have questions, you can give us a call at 813-239-9663. You can also email dj at wmnf.org. You can text 813-4330. 885. And um, I, in the last couple of years, we've had a, a lot of people who have either lost their jobs or because of the pandemic, or they've decided to stop working or they've, uh, they've gone into self-employment or something. Are more people signing up for the Affordable Care Act now because they aren't employed by regular employers? Great question. Uh, the, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services released an announcement yesterday that there's a 21% increase for people coming into the marketplace or people enrolling in the marketplace this year. Um, and quite a few of those are uh, new enrollees, so never having been in the marketplace before. Um, we've definitely anecdotally seen quite a few people who are retiring or you know, considering their options and uh, the marketplace is really serving the purpose of giving them the flexibility and freedom to do that and not necessarily having to stay with an employer um, longer than they had intended to because of uh, benefits. Um, so that's really great, especially for uh, people who are self-employed, small business owners, the ability to look at the marketplace and get quality affordable health care um, to ensure that they have access to medical care. Rick in Tampa has a question about not going the full year with the plan. He says, sure. how about dropping ACA plans partly through the year someone going to a Medicare plan at the age of 65 in the spring of 2022. So can you sign up for a partial year? Oh, for sure, absolutely, yeah. And if you are eligible for other coverage like through Medicare, they, that, that's exactly the intention. You know, it's filling the gap while you, uh, you know, are waiting for Medicare to begin. Same thing if someone were to get a new job but offered benefits mid-year, also able to terminate at that point as well. That's not a problem. I want to remind people that we're speaking with Katie Roeders Turner, Executive Director of Family Health Care Foundation. Saturday is the deadline to sign up for health insurance through the Affordable Care Act marketplace. And we're answering all of your questions about the Obamacare sign up. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe with Sean Canan on WMNF Tampa 88.5 FM. If you'd like to email us, it's dj at wmnf.org. You can text 813-4330-885 or call 813-239-9663 with your questions about the Obamacare. We briefly mentioned the COVID-19 pandemic. How else, besides what we've already mentioned, how else has the COVID-19 pandemic help, um, affected the health insurance market? Well, I think, I think it's certainly given people a pause to, and reconsider you know, the need for having access to health insurance and access to services. Um, we've assisted quite a few people who you know, had in the past potentially for um, chosen to not enroll in coverage um, and potentially maybe because of price or uh, not necessarily understanding the value of it, um, but who then experienced medical issues, many of them because of COVID, unfortunately, who then came back and reconsidered and then chose to enroll. Um, so we've, we've heard that about for many people. Um, I, I think just ensuring that um, people are, you know, the importance of uh, knowing that coverage is there for them if needed, especially in the event of an emergency, um, that is probably been a little bit more on people's minds, especially since the, the COVID pandemic. Um, and as you mentioned, of course, you know, people have, there's been a huge employment shift in the last two years. Um, and the marketplace has really helped people with that. Um, it's given people the opportunity to reconsider new opportunities for themselves, whether they are going to go off and do some new um, exciting adventure, you know, uh, maybe small business opportunities. I and mean, the marketplace helps them where they're leaving the large group insurance offered from a former employer. We got a text message in from the 813 area code here, and it sounds similar to a previous question, but let's see if we can find out if there's a different, uh, if they're asking a different question. This person asks, what if they're retiring mid-year as a 60-year-old, do I need to sign up early? So um, I guess this is someone who maybe are lo is losing their health insurance in the mid-year. Can they sign up now? So I would, uh, generally it's 60 days within the um, loss of credible coverage. Uh, so we usually do it in about the 30-day 30, 30 prior mark. We'll do a, an initial call with somebody to explore options, compare plans via that window shopping tool, um, and then really 30 days prior to the termination of where their coverage is going to end. Um, then we go forward, do the application, do plan selection and enrollment so that there's no gap in coverage. 
So for example, if someone's coverage is going to end on April 30th, then we ensure that their coverage with the marketplace can begin on May 1st. Maybe that's, this is a good time to point out that the open enrollment deadline is this coming Saturday, mm -hmm. but I, I have a feeling that if there's a change in your situation, you could enroll in July or in October or something like that. Am I right? Absolutely. Great point to articulate. So absolutely. The open enrollment deadline is coming up this Saturday on January 15th. Um, I have to plug that on January 14th, we will be at the Children's Board Family Resource Center in Brandon from one to five, providing one-on-one -on -one application assistance and enrollment assistance. Um, but after January 15th, if you have a major life change, so for example, loss of insurance coverage, if you've recently moved to the, to the area and you're looking to um, change benefits for Tampa Bay, um, loss of coverage, uh, the, um, if you're coming off your parents' insurance, recently married, there's a whole bunch of uh, major life changes that may qualify someone for a special enrollment period. And at that point, you are then able to go in and elect new coverage. I want to remind people that our guest is Katie Roders turner Executive Director of Family Health Care Foundation. We're talking about this Saturday's open enrollment deadline to sign up for health insurance through the Affordable Care Act marketplace. And you can reach the Family Health Care Foundation at 813-995-7005. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe with Sean Canan, and we have a question in, that came in from Vince in Tampa, and he says, and you mentioned Brandon a minute ago, where would I go for application assistance in Tampa? So feel free to mention the Brandon event that's happening Friday again, or, or other people who maybe aren't close to Brandon, where can they go for assistance? Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, great. So we are um, year round. We are at the Children's Board of Hillsborough County Family Resource Centers. Um, there's seven of them in Hillsborough County. In addition to that, if anyone were to call our number 813-995-7005, we have other in-person locations around Tampa Bay. So for example, right now, we're thrilled to be on site at three campuses uh, for St. Petersburg College in Pinellas County. Um, up in Pasco County, our partners at Premier Community Healthcare Group have um, appointment availability as well. Um, and of course, our partners with BayCare are in uh, Hillsborough, Pasco, uh, Polk, and Pinellas too. Tampa General Hospital on Davis Island, of course, has application assistance as well. And then Ivara down in Pinellas is also providing application assistance. Um, so first and foremost, Hillsborough County, seven locations uh, throughout the county. And then if anything, you can call 813-995-7005 and we'll help you find an appointment. And that number may have gone by quickly. It's up on our website. It's on WMNF.org. There's a post about the Obamacare uh, enrollment deadline coming up Saturday. In that, you'll ha have the telephone number for the Family Health Care Foundation, 813-995-7005. There's also a link to healthcare.gov, which I think is a place where anyone can go and kind of compare, com compare plans and things like that. Am I right, Katie? Absolutely, yeah. Healthcare.gov, you're able to go in, create your application, um, and then do plan selection as well as finalizing enrollment. Um, and then also on that website, you'll be able to find the window shopping tool, which again is really great because if you're not yet ready to do the application, it's very nice to just pop in your zip code, the age of your household members, your projected income for 2022. You can see what your tax credit may be and then all the plans that are available for you to look at. I guess this is Katie Roters Turner, Executive Director of Family Health Care Foundation. We're taking your questions about Ob Obamacare open enrollment, and we do have a question coming in from the phone, Katie. So here's sure. Jim from Zephyr Hills. Thanks for calling, Jim. Hey, Katie, thank you so much uh, for this topic. I have two questions. Uh, one is dealing with children that are away from school, away from home at school in, in Florida and outside the state of Florida. Uh, would they be eligible to file as independent if they're away from school and avoid the, the school insurance? And the second question is, is the, the Affordable Care Act still requiring that you, uh, that you file a tax return? Uh, can people without file, who don't file a tax return uh, still be eligible for ACA? All right, thank you for those questions, Jim. So two great questions. So for children who are um, out of state, um, there would be a question as to if you're claiming them as dependents on a household tax return um, in order to get the eligibility for financial assistance. Um, it may also determine what state that they're in, in that 
which application is being done. Not every state is a part of the federally facilitated marketplace, healthcare.gov. Some of them have their own specific state-based exchange. So if this is a question for you, Jim, I would love for us to talk a bit more with the navigator to make sure that we're filling out an application correctly. So that 813-995-7005 number is staffed with our navigators so they could take a call right after this. Um, but in general, yes, a, a, a child who is out of state at college could still enroll in coverage through the health insurance marketplace or state-based exchange. Um, so I hope that answers that question. Uh, the second part of it, the filing of the tax return. If you are receiving financial assistance in the form of an advanced premium tax credit through healthcare.gov or through a state-based exchange, yes, you would have to indicate that you'll be filing a tax return. And the reason for that is that there is a reconciliation process that occurs um, at the very end of a tax year. So let's say January, 2022 you will be receiving what's called a 1095A form um, from healthcare.gov that will show that for 2021 tax year, there was premium assistance or advanced premium tax credits received. And what they will do is they'll, do, they'll reconcile that when you file your taxes, just to ensure that the income information that was put into the application is on track with what the actual modified adjusted gross income of the household was. Thank you for your questions, Jim. Thanks, appreciate that. And thanks, Katie. Also, I have a question, Katie, from, sure. uh, from the internet that says, uh, can I get coverage with a subsidy if I only have minimal income, less than $5,000? I tried previously, was, but was denied based on too low income. So we've, we've kind of touched on this a little bit uh, earlier, but let's, let's go over that again. If you are making way less than, than, uh, than poverty wages, what would, what would your recommendation be? Great question. So um, if somebody is in you know, one of the counties that offers the county-based coverage, so Hillsborough, Polk, Pinellas, that may be a program that we'd be referring to. Of course, we'll go through a screener. We'll determine that there is no other taxable income in the household or projected for 2022. Um, They're welcome to look at the full price plans if premium assistance is not available because we are not a Medicaid expansion state. Um, but at that point, if um, that's not an option, we'll of course look at those county-based programs to see if that might be a good fit to provide affordable health care options for that individual. And what I'm hearing is that even if it seems likely that this person won't be enrolling in, in open enrollment, medic, um, sorry, Obamacare, you're still able to walk them through that process. Absolutely. So that's a big part of the work that we do um, at the Family Healthcare Foundation and with our community-based partners. We're screening people for any possible program that they could be eligible for. So of course, we're looking at the health insurance marketplace. We're highly trained, certified, and able to compare plans. But if it's determined that this person is not eligible either for financial assistance um, or there's another program that's a better fit for them, then we're going to be looking at that plan and helping them walk through that application process as well. It's not going to be just stopping with the marketplace. We're always going to try to find the most affordable quality healthcare program that's going to get someone access to medical services. Our guest is Katie Roders Turner, Executive Director of Family Healthcare Foundation. We're talking about this Saturday's deadline to sign up for health insurance through the Affordable Care Act Marketplace. And you can reach the Family Healthcare Foundation at 813-995-7005. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe with Sean Canan on WMNF Tampa. If you do have questions about getting ACA coverage, you can call us right now at 813-239-9663 or you can email dj at wmnf.org. You can text 813-433-0885. Katie, you, you mentioned that there are more than 100 plans. That sounds kind of overwhelming. It might uh, give someone kind of uh, make, give them cold feet and even starting the process. What would you recommend for someone who doesn't even know where to start? Sure, so there is actually, it's actually 160. So not to make it even more overwhelming sounding, um, so usually when, let's say, for example, I'm working with a family um, and we're you know, going through the options available, we will generally try to pick three different insurance carriers right off the bat, just to ensure that there's a variety. Um, unless someone's decided that there's only like one or two that they're wanting to look at. Um, we will usually pick a high deductible plan, a low deductible plan, um, and then perhaps one other component that maybe the person's indicated they'd like to review. And we compare those three side by side. 
And that's really helpful because it starts with the process of elimination. You know right off the bat that high deductible is not for you. Or you know right off the bat that you absolutely want to know that your doctor's visit is going to cost X. Um, and so that really helps narrow down the decision-making factor for people in determining what direction they'd like to go in. Um, I think that's why it's so great to talk with the navigator because it really can be a conversation. And you've got someone that can just bounce ideas, off, you can bounce ideas off of, or that can give you feedback on, you know, reframing what your in priority areas are um, and ensuring that what you've said that you like to do is the direction you're headed in. And there are kind of codes for different plans. There's bronze plans, silver plans, and gold. What does all that mean? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, there's a couple of different categories for the, all of the plans uh, that are in the marketplace. Um, there's catastrophic, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. And so what those levels indicate, um, the metal tiers, is it's supposed to be the amount of out-of-pocket expenses you may expect to um, uh, spend in a policy year. So for example, for somebody who's got a really high level of medical need, um, a bronze level plan with a really high out-of-pocket maximum and out-of-pocket uh, deductible, um, that might not be the direction that they're interested in. They may be looking in something more like a gold level plan with a lower maximum out-of-pocket um, because they know that they are planning to incur more medical expenses and costs throughout the year. Our guest is Katie Roters Turner, Executive Director of Family Healthcare Foundation. We're talking about open enrollment for Obamacare. We have a question here from Mary who emailed in. I have, do you have any suggestions or ideas about coverage for dental insurance? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so there are dental insurance plans available on the marketplace. Uh, so you will have to enroll in medical in order to be able to then enroll in dental as well. Um, and some of the plans now actually offer a combo vision and dental, as well as medical, which is nice for people who kind of just want a one-stop shop for all of their healthcare needs. Um, if for some reason someone elects not to enroll in medical and is looking for dental in general, um, there, there is open market for dental insurance. Um, so it's many of the larger carriers will sell individual policies at pretty low premium prices. Um, with any of the dental insurance plans that people are looking at, whether it be on the marketplace or off the marketplace. We always just make sure that people are looking at the fine print, ensuring that they're aware of any waiting periods for services they're looking to have completed. Um, also understanding um, if there's any maximums that the plan will pay out. Um, and those are things that we ensure, you know, encourage people to keep in mind regardless of where they're shopping for dental insurance, marketplace or off marketplace. And some of the county plans also cover dental, is that right? Right, so just, just uh, recently, Hillsborough County Board of County Commissioners uh, off, um, added uh, some dental services to the Hillsborough County Healthcare Plan as well, which is very exciting. Peter writes in and says, thanks for this topic. My daughter has two children under seven years old and they live in St. John's County. Can you please provide information on what organizations she can contact to get info on what you're talking about now? So open enrollment for Obamacare in St. John's County. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I believe that's going to be our partner, the Health Planning Council of Northeast Florida. However, for anybody who's in the state of Florida and looking to find a navigator, and this is outside of Tampa Bay, even within Tampa Bay, um, they're welcome to actually go to our website, which is familyhealthcarefdn.org, or they can go to coveringflorida.org. Um, there is a scheduling tool on both of those websites. Someone can pop in their zip code, and they'll be connected with a navigator closest to that area which is really helpful. Um, they're also welcome to call the statewide number, which is 813-995. Oh, you know what? I'm going to, hold on. I'm going to come back for that because I'm going to mess that up. I'm going to get confused with our own, actually. I'll come right back with that statewide number. But coveringflorida.org is going to be the statewide uh, website to find a navigator in any part of the state of Florida. During the Trump administration, cost sharing reduction supplements were cut off. That made some plans more expensive, but has that, uh, have, th have those supplements been reinstated under the Biden administration? Yes, they have, which is so exciting. And hopefully will really be assisting us as we, uh, you know, uh, try to attract, uh, as there more carriers maybe considering coming back into the marketplace. Very exciting. So, you know, that I, I had a lot of uh, word salad there, but essentially what that means is it's going to be it, it, may, it may have been more expensive before for certain plans, but now it's going to be less expensive. Yes, yeah. I think it's gonna be very exciting to see, you know, the plans that are, uh, you know, reconsidering coming back to the marketplace after having left it previously. 
Um, and you know, we've seen some carriers returning, like United Healthcare, for example, was previously in the marketplace, and then you know, they exited, and then now have come back again. Um, so we're hoping that for a few of the other larger carriers too. Some insurance companies try to drive businesses to narrower network products, like specific clinics, with what are called preferred, preferred providers. So tell us about how that all plays into, uh, is that an option that you can point toward when, when you are signing up for the ACA? For sure. I mean, we'll, we'll review all of the different options to people. Um, we do ensure that we're, you know, if, if someone is choosing a plan and considering that, and they're seeing something like a tier one provider, a value choice provider, preferred provider, really trying to articulate what that looks like. Um, we also always encourage people if they have a provider that's very important to them, a priority provider, we're calling that provider to ensure that they're accepting that actual plan product, not necessarily just the insurance carrier name, because that is another important component. We never want people to be surprised once the plan starts that the insurance plan that they've selected is not exactly what they thought it was, um, as much as we possibly can. Um, so yes, there are plans that may seek to offer up incentives like um, free, no, no co-pays to see a primary, uh, very low co-pay to see a specialist, if you're seeing them at these very specialty clinics or value choice clinics, I should say. Um, and that will possibly lower a premium price. And for some people, that is a great fit. I want to remind people that our guest is Katie Roters Turner, Executive Director of Family Healthcare Foundation. We're talking about this Saturday's deadline to sign up for health insurance through the Affordable Care Act marketplace. And you can reach the Family Healthcare Foundation at 813-995-7005. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe with Sean Canan on 88.5 FM WMNF Tampa. If you have questions about getting ACA coverage, you can give us a call right now. It's 813 813- 239-9663. You can also text 813-433-0885 or email dj at wmnf.org. Katie, Florida, I think it has in the past at least led the nation in signups for ACA. How many people in Florida and how many people in the country are covered by Affordable Care Act health insurance? Well, that's a really great question. So as of yesterday, and you're going to have to forgive me, Sean, I'm going to pull up some of the statistics that came out yesterday from the CMS press release. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, there was there they had seen a 21% increase um, in coverage for this 2022 enrollment period. Um, so that's been really exciting. Um, so 13.8 million Americans, 13.8 million Americans had enrolled prior to um, the open enrollment deadline, which uh, is, as you mentioned, Saturday, January 14th. And then for Florida so far, we had 2.5, 2, 2,592,906 individuals who've already enrolled in coverage for 2022, which is thrilling. Um, we'll have to go back and compare against last week, uh, last year's snapshots um, that are available weekly every Friday from CMS um, to see like what the change in that was. Um, however, it's been considerable. Um, and it's been considerable here in Florida. They've also seen it being considerable in Texas, another very large um, uh, Medicaid gap state, a state that has not expanded Medicaid. Um, and so it's exciting to know that so many people are enthusiastic about getting access to affordable health care, that there's a need there, there's a desire there um, to enroll in um, the health insurance marketplace. Let's take a phone call right now from Vinny in Dunedin. Hi, Vinny, you're on the air. I'm doing great. Thanks for calling. Thank you, Katie. Uh, you're, you've got some great information that you're importing to the community, and, and we all appreciate it. So, and you're you're very very clear, which is really important here. Um, I happen to be an independent uh, ins health insurance agent and broker, and um, I wanted to add something that that I found uh, because of the uh, the uh, new expansion of subsidies in the marketplace uh, through Obamacare that employers with less than 50 employees who are offering health insurance um, could actually be doing a disservice for their employees because uh, of, generally speaking, uh, employees with under an income of under 60000 have very heavily subsidized plans that they can take advantage of on the marketplace. And um, I just finished signing up a woman in a dental office, and she got a very good, if that's not an oxymoron, bronze plan for $0 per month. And um, she has a, a low deductible, 
$7,500, and um, basically free earth, not free earth care, but no copay urgent care, and of course, no copay for her primary care physician, which is a tremendous plan for a bronze plant. Um, and I'm having that happen all the time. So um, employers with less than 50 employees might want to reconsider what they're spending their money on. Uh, because obviously it costs them sometimes $500 a month per employee to offer that insurance, which their employee can get for free. Thanks for that call, Vinny. Katie, do you have any thoughts about what Vinny said? You know, I think it's, we've seen it being a challenge for small business owners, of course, you know, and, and that's been an ongoing issue um, with being able to offer health insurance to their employees. Um, we are happy to assist anyone talk through options for sure. We've gone to small businesses and helped their employees enroll if the company is not offering insurance. Um, some insur some small businesses are able to set up things like um, uh, health reimbursement arrangements with their employees, and that's been a great fit. Um, I think when it comes down to it, you know, does it align with the vision, the mission, and the um, values of the company? You know, what the priority is in providing support to their employees and their families. Um, and it's definitely something that a business owner or administrator, you know, needs to decide. Our guest is Katie Roders turner Executive Director of Family Healthcare Foundation. We're talking about this Saturday's deadline to sign up for health insurance through the Affordable Care Act marketplace. And we're taking your calls as well. And I want to point out the other day, you were part of a press conference that urged Tampa Bay families to sign up for the ACA marketplace. At that press conference, Congress member Kathy Castor said families need to access resources to navigate the many health care plans that are available. And she said that local help is available for lower cost health care. Here's one of the here's a short clip of what Kathy Castor said at that press conference. And Castor also mentioned that even with tax credits, families struggle to find affordable deductibles. She said there's a new act called the No Surprises Act that took effect January 1st to prevent unexpected and expensive out-of-network expenses. There might be a provider there that wasn't on their health plan. The, the person would end up with an outrageous out-of-network bill. Now we pass a new, very important consumer protection law that will prevent patients from being surprised with those outrageous bills. Well, those are a couple of segments of something that Representative Kathy Castor said the other day at a press conference. You were there, Katie Roeders turner Executive Director of Family Health Care Foundation. What would you say about her encouraging people to, to sign up and also about this um, No Surprises Act and how that might affect health care costs? Oh, well, we were just obviously, we're always so thrilled at the support that uh, the Congresswoman's office has, has always given to uh, the overall statewide program with covering Florida and the USF College of Public Health. And then, of course, our local program in Tampa Bay. Um, we were also joined, of course, by uh, Kelly Paris, Executive Director of the Children's Board of Hillsborough County at that press conference. And, you know, that support is just incredible because they um, there's a recognition that the program is, is working, it's enrolling people in coverage, it's giving people access to coverage, but that there are improvements that do need to continue to be made. Um, so this act, the No Surprises Act, you know, it's very important in ensuring that the integrity of the Affordable Care Act is maintained. As more carriers come in, as more providers are in network, um, ensuring that there are safeguards in place um, that really do protect the intention of the Affordable Care Act when it was first passed. Um, so I think it's great, super excited about it, um, and just always so, so thrilled at the support and humbled um, at the um, partnership. A lot of the signing up process involves uh, um, proving how much income you have, things like that. A lot of that includes documenting paperwork, but um, there are some people who might have trouble gathering documents like that. For example, what about people experiencing homelessness in the community? They still uh, would be would have some measure of security with having some health insurance. Sure. Is there any way that without they, assuming that they might not have the documentation needed, could they come to you and try to find out what the best way is to protect their health? Absolutely. So at any point, if anyone calls 813-995-7005, they can talk to one of our navigators. Something I want to make sure we point out is that we have navigators who speak English, Spanish, Haitian Creole, and Portuguese. 
Um, so really trying to ensure that we're providing as many services as possible. Um, so there sometimes is a request for income documentation. Um, I will say that that uh, requirement has certainly gone down quite a bit as the Affordable Care Act is now going into the ninth year of open enrollment. Um, people are returning. There's information that's already available to be reviewed. If income is in line with past years, there may, may not be a request. And as long as people continue to do that reconciliation with tax returns, really should be no issue. Um, but yes, absolutely, for people who are having issues with obtaining documentation or maybe have ch a challenge uploading documentation virtually, electronically, we are absolutely able to assist with that. So we are in Hillsborough County, we're in the community at those seven Hillsborough County, uh, Children's Board of Hillsborough County Family Resource Centers. We'll help people upload documentation for any of the programs they may qualify for. Um, that's a big part of the work that navigators do, ensuring that people are not only making the plan selections and enrolling, that they're understanding their coverage and helping to remove barriers from them, getting them into that coverage. A few times today, we've talked about how in Florida, if you're near the lower end of the income scale, if you might be in this Medicaid gap, the Florida legislative session begins today. Many Democrats are calling for Medicaid expansion. Again, I mean, we've heard this year after year after year. What would Medicaid expansion do if it ever passed in Florida? And how likely is it, if, if that's a question that you're willing to answer? Um, it would certainly be life-changing for a large number of people in the state of Florida. Um, I, I don't know that I could speak to how likely it would be. Um, we're excited for any opportunity to have more people get access to coverage and also to be there to help them navigate those changes or those new opportunities. Um, so if, if it were to occur, you know, we've seen across the nation that most states have expanded Medicaid at this point, um, and it certainly helped people get access to healthcare services. Um, so we all stay tuned um, as, you know, the Florida legislative session goes underway. Um, there is federal discussion as well about some other options as, that might be able to assist with covering that um, demographic of individuals. Um, but for the time being, we'll just continue to help people navigate options. And when there's an opportunity to go into the county-based programs, then we'll be absolutely happy to assist. And one of, another option, and you mentioned it during this interview, but maybe we could talk a little bit more about it right now, is Florida Kid Care. What can you tell people about that program? Absolutely. So great. So Florida Kid Care is the state's health insurance for kids. Um, most children are eligible for Florida Kid Care in the state of Florida. Um, there's a couple of different programs that they may fall underneath. Um, Florida Kid Care is the umbrella for that. So it includes Medicaid for kids. It includes Medicids, uh, Florida Healthy Kids, subsidized, and full pay. So again, based on a household size and income, um, may determine if there is a premium price for the household for the children enrolled. However, the out-of-pocket expenses are either incredibly low cost or free. It's an incredible program. If someone has not yet considered Florida Kid Care for their children and they're looking for other affordable options, it is an amazing program. We are happy to assist with that as well. When you're talking about um, premiums and co-pays and so forth, there's a difference between whether you go see someone who's in network or out of network oftentimes. But what about emergency visits? Is there, uh, is there a contingency taken into account for if there's an emergency and you happen to be taken to an out of network provider? Absolutely, yeah, that's a great point. So if you go to an emergency room, that in network copay or coinsurance or whatever that um, in network contribution that's your member responsibility should be applied even if it is an out of network hospital emergency room visit, which is very important too if you're out of state. So that's very helpful too, knowing that you could go to the ER and um, be only responsible for that in-network responsibility that you um, reviewed when you were enrolling initially. And what would you recommend, recommend if you get a bill from a hospital or from a doctor or something and it just looks not right? It looks like there's it's way too expensive. Are there things that you would recommend doing? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I've had that experience myself. Um, I would absolutely call the hospital or the doctor's office, ask, ask to speak to a financial assistance counselor or somebody in the billing department to review it. Um, I'd also call your insurance company that, you know, if you do have insurance to ensure that you understand what the, what the, um, the billing code was used for that service provision, just to ensure that it's correct. Um, also to make sure that you know exactly what your responsibility was supposed to have been. 
Um, and then that you're prepared to take that information back to the provider to ensure that that information is accurate. Um, these are very large entities usually who are going through multiple billing uh, cycles. And so their mistakes can be made. Um, and potentially if there is a responsibility that you may have to incur, um, contacting them, speaking with them is far better than avoiding it. And there may be opportunities to uh, create a payment plan, um, so, and then or potentially even rebill correctly. Our guest is Katie Roeders Turner, Executive Director of the Family Healthcare Foundation. We're talking about this Saturday's deadline to sign up for health insurance through the Affordable Care Act marketplace. We're going to take a call right now from DeAndre in Plant City. Hi, DeAndre. Thanks for calling. Hello. Okay. Um, how do you escape losing uh, like your established? doctors i've had an experience now where I, I lost insurance altogether but i was still sort of tied in with certain practitioners i signed up through the marketplace the marketplace explained that they were covered by this particular insurance or they accepted this particular insurance and then um after i went ahead and uh you know signed up with that insurance these, you know, like I lost a bunch of my doctors all of a sudden they're saying that don't accept this and that and then those who accepted it the pe people they partner with with you know cat scans and CPs and things and that and and and, and, and uh, you know blood draws or whatever they didn't accept it people in their building so I like I got like one out of like five different you know um practitioners ultimately um when i expected to have them all like and i don't understand like why that happened and like how do i get that and get insurance that won't happen again yeah that's a super good question and so that is especially for people who have either um multiple specialists that they're really engaged with and wanting to ensure continuity of care we call each of the providers. I mean, there's, a, so there's some really good tools in healthcare.gov. You can search by providers, which is a great first step. Um, however, to ensure that your specialists are in network, we always, if you're considering a plan, I call with, with people we're working with to ensure that their specialists are going to be in network for them. Because that is very frustrating when you think you've done your due diligence, you thought you understood, and then you go to get your services from the healthcare provider and they're telling you that they're not in network any longer. So I'm so sorry you had that experience. I will share that if you've already enrolled in coverage for 2022, you actually still could make a change until Saturday, January 15th. Um, so we would be happy to assist you with that. If you'd like to give us a call, the 813-995-7005 number, just to review the plan options again and ensure that whatever you had enrolled in, maybe perhaps there is another option that would have more of your providers in network. Thank you for that call, DeAndre. And Katie, as we wrap up, can you just maybe remind people where you'll be this week and how people can get in touch with you? Absolutely. So we have navigators standing by, and we also have virtual appointments available as well. If you call 813-995-7005, you can speak with the navigator, set up an appointment. Um, we are also at St. Petersburg College tomorrow in South St. Pete. Um, we are also having our enrollment event at the Children's Board Family Resource Center in Brandon on Friday from one to five. Um, and then in addition to that, I want to share the statewide number for covering Florida. And we are the Tampa Bay partner um, for the statewide navigator project administered through the University of South Florida. So covering Florida's phone number is 877-813-995. Our number locally, Tampa Bay, 813-995-7005. We can connect you to any of the virtual appointments or in-person appointments. As I mentioned, we have partners with Baycare Health System, Tampa General Hospital, Premier Health Care Group, Avara Health down in Pinellas. Um, and then Friday, as I mentioned, that Brandon enrollment event, one to five. Well, thanks so much for coming on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe today, Katie. Thank you so much. This has been such a joy. We really appreciate the support. Yeah, it's been very helpful. Thank you so much. Katie Roeders Turner, ex Executive Director of Family Healthcare Foundation. Thanks to Barbara Fling for answering our phones today. You've been listening to Tuesday Cafe with Sean Canaan. This show is every Tuesday morning at 10 in this time slot tomorrow. Janet and Shelley host Midpoint. Next up, we have guest hosts filling in. That's Mary and Arlene. 
And that's coming up after NPR headlines. You're listening to WMNF Tampa, St. Petersburg, Sarasota, and Lakeland. Thanks so much for listening and for supporting WMNF Tampa.